السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will talk about a female companion of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Salama, radiyallahu anha, and a male companion, Sayyidna Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, radiyallahu anha. So let's start, inshallah, by talking about uh, one of the mothers of the believers, Umm Al-Mu'mineen, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um Salama, uh, her, her real name is uh, Hind bint uh, Hind bintu Abi Umayya, uh, a noble, honorable woman, a scholar of fiqh, and a narrator to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Her father was known for his great generosity. And uh, he was called Zadur Rakib. And the reason for that uh, is his great generosity that if someone is traveling with him, he is not uh, supposed to take anything with him, any sustenance, any provision, because of Zadur uh, Rakib. Uh, Zadur Rakib was. Uh, sufficient, uh, his generosity was sufficient for anyone who travels with him, so that person would not take anything with him. So, uh, before before uh, uh, Umm Salama was married to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she was married to Abu Salama. And Abu Salama uh, is his nickname. His real name is Abdullah ibn Asad. And Abdullah ibn Asad was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his mother's side. Uh, Abu Salama was known for his gentleness and his good manners. And he was uh, an amazing uh, husband to his wife. There was an amazing strong love relationship between the, the two pair, Abu Salama and Um Salama. Uh, um Salama was among those very few women of Sahaba who migrated both hijras, the first hijra, the second hijra, the hijra to Abbasin, and the hijra to Medina. More of an honor, she was the first woman Sahabi to migrate to Medina. When she was uh, uh, among the group who migrated to Abyssinia, uh, she was she had a, a remarkable position there. She narrated in accurate details what happened in the palace of Negus when the the non-believers came to him to trying to get back, th back those um, Muslims who uh, uh, fled to uh, Abyssin because they knew that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, told them that the, the king of Abyssin is a just king and you will, you will, uh, you will be safe there. So, uh, uh, um Salama narrated everything that happened during that meeting when those men tried to get the Muslims back and of course how they could not and uh, uh, they, they came back uh, uh, as losers. On the day of Uhud, Abu Salama uh, was injured very severely and he was carried out of the battle. He recovered from his injury, but he was never fully recovered. And uh, he remained sick for a few months. One day, there was a conversation between Um Salama and Abu Salama. So she, she told him, 
Uh, how about I heard I heard that. Um, uh, what do you think? What do you think of me not getting married after you die? And uh, she looked at uh, he looked at her and he asked, "Will you listen to what I say?" And she said, "Yes, I've always been listening to you. I never disobeyed you." And Abu Salama said, "If I die, I want you to get married." And I. Uh, and he made dua for her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would uh, would give her a husband who is better than him and who, who will take good care of her. But Um Salama looked at him and she said, you are the best husband. You are the best person who will be better than you. And especially that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once made dua for him. And she remembered the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam words, Allahumma ghfir li abi salama warfa' darajata. Oh Allah, uh, give forgiveness to abi salama and elevate his maqam. So she was thinking of these words, of this dua of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was thinking of her husband, how good he is to her. How can she find a better husband? Then, subhanAllah, Abu Salama died. And she was very sad. She was very sad to, to lose her beloved husband. But suddenly she remembered that uh, the, uh, what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has told the, uh, the Ummah, that um, if you face any calamity, you have to have a dua. You have to say these words. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma jurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayran minha. Indeed, to Allah we all belong. And to him is our return. Oh Allah, reward me in this calamity and replace Replace it with something better to me. So Um Salama said, I made this dua. But I said, who is better than Abu Salama? So uh, uh, different Sahabas uh, proposed to her, but she refused. Now let's stop here for a second. Let's remember <clears throat> that when uh, a calamity strikes, when someone is tested, and calamities can be a death of a close family member, a loss of wealth, a big loss of uh, uh, anything, a loss in health, so when someone faces any of these things, and these are often happening in life, we are always tested and the tests are countless. So whenever we have a test, whenever anybody, anyone has a test, the, the person needs to read this dua. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward that person. When we, have, when we are tested, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for so many reasons. We have to thank Allah that this test was not in our faith. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for the, for the blessings of being Muslims, and that's the best of the blessings. وَكَفَى بِهَا مِنْ نِعَمْ so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the first, the first thing, we, we thank him that this calamity is not in our faith. Then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this calamity is not bigger than what it is. So when, uh, when someone has um, a calamity, the first thing they would say, Alhamdulillah, that it ended like this. 
there is a big lot of there is a big care of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is uh, if if someone has a car accident, uh, some uh, b- bones broken here and there, they would say, Alhamdulillah, we still we can still see, we can still hear, we can still function, our brain is safe. So we would say, Alhamdulillah, that the calamity is not bigger. And whenever we have any test, we have to remember all the tests, all the calamities that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed through. And this will make us realize that our problem is so trivial in comparison to what happened to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we are practicing sabr. We are practicing patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in so many ayahs in the Quran. Inna Allah sabirin. Indeed, Allah is with those who practice patience. Wabashiri sabirin. Give good tidings to those who practice patience. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who practice patience. But when? At the beginning, when the problem happens, when the calamity strikes, this is where we have to practice patience. Once Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was passing by the graveyard and he and he saw a woman crying and crying on the on the grave, and she is not looking at anybody, she was just crying. So he said to her, Take it easy, yeah, oh woman. And she said, Oh, just leave me alone. You don't have my uh, the, uh, the problem, the calamity that I have been struck with. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, left. Later, when they, when they told her that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was the one who was speaking to her, she felt so bad and so ashamed and she rushed to him and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I did not know that you were, you were the one who, uh, who was standing there. And he said to her, inda sadmati ula. The, the good patience you practice is at the beginning, at the time of the calamity. So this is sabr. But do you know what is higher than sabr? There is an elevated maqam than the sabr maqam. And we have seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave good tidings for those who who practice patience. And Allah loves those who practice patience. And Allah is with those who practice patience. But what is higher? The maqam that's higher is the maqam of rida. To be content, to be happy, to accept. And this is what we all need to think about. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us something, we have to accept it, whether good or bad. So practicing acceptance for bad things is a higher maqam than practicing patience. Because with patience, with patience there is grief, there is sadness. Someone is sad and he practices patience. Oh, Allah ordered me to practice patience and I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, which is amazing. But if that same person says, Allah put me in this test, Allah tested me this test and I am accepting this for the sake of Allah, then this is higher because Accepting without having this sorrow and sadness and grief in the heart. Khalas, whatever Allah chooses is the best. In the, in the outer appearance, it might be a big test, but deep inside our hearts, it should be complete acceptance to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us. So we go back to to see what happened, what was the reward 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for to Um Salama radiallahu anha. So many sahabas proposed to get married to Um Salama, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for her none other than the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she did not only get someone better than her husband, but he gave her also, Allah gave her the paradise. In the day after she will be with, in the highest maqams with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's all learn from this story. Let's all, all learn from what happened to Um Salama. And let's all memorize this dua. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma jurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayran minha. We have to understand the power of dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Du'uni astajib lakum. Make dua and I will fulfill your dua. Some people might say, okay, but I make lots of dua and uh, I don't get the results. Okay, let me tell you something. When we make dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will either accept it and give it to us in this dunya, or he will delay it till the day after, or he will push away calamities that might have coming to us, but they don't because of the power of dua. Sometimes we ask Allah for something and we keep nagging until it happens. And when it happens, we say, oh Allah, we wish it did not happen. That's why when we want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, we would say, Ya Allah, if there is khair in this thing, then give it to me. We don't know where, where is khair. We don't know what is khair. So we ask Allah, we say, Ya Allah, we don't know how to choose. We want you to choose for us. We don't know how to decide. We want you to decide for us. And Sayyidina Ali used to say, Inni la afrahu. He, I am happy when I want something and Allah does something else other than what I want. So make dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to hear the voice of the believers. So he loves to hear us making making dua, lots of dua. And if there is someone who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates or something, he would say, oh, when, when he makes a dua, oh, I want this, I want that, then he will say, Allah will tell them, the angels, give him what he wants. I, I hate to hear his voice. And sometimes we look at this dunya, how it is arranged, and we see that. There's so many non-believers who get everything they want. There's so many non-believers who have the happiest, uh, uh, the, the, what everything they need in this life. But if we look deep inside, we will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared this uh, dunya, this vanishing dunya for them. But we, are, we will be enjoying the eternal life. So do not underestimate the power of dua. Make lots of dua for yourself, for your spouses, for your parents, for your ancestors, for your offsprings. Make lots of dua for your children that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will protect them and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide them with the best of suhbah that will help them stay on their path on the right path. Make them see the nur that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared, for, uh, uh, prepared uh, for them when they follow the, uh, uh, the, the, the correct path, when they follow the teachings of Allah, when they fulfill the orders of Allah, when they prevent themselves from doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented them uh, from doing. Make lots of dua. Once it is narrated that someone made, made lots of dua in dunya 
and he sometimes he would get the the dua would get fulfilled and sometimes not when he passed away someone saw him in the dream and he said oh how how would you have this uh, the this all these blessings or this reward what did you do he said i used to make dua and i wish that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept any of my dua in dunya because he saved everything for me in the akhirah So Umm Salama radiyallahu anha got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she had the best of love. And she would do anything, anything for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She would, uh, she would get the water of his wudu to, to uh, wipe her face and to, to have blessings. Uh, she would uh, uh, keep some of his blessed hair, uh, some pieces, some of the hairs of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a vessel that uh, she would show it to, to each and every one whom she loves. And uh, if there is someone who is sick, they, uh, she used to wipe, uh, to pour some water on these uh, on the, these blessed hairs she had and to, to give them the water so they would... Uh, 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 get the barakah of that water. They would drink it. They would uh, uh, wipe their their bodies, and and she would do anything for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So years passed, and say uh, Umm Salama was with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and her wisdom was manifested on the day of Hudaybiyah when she did something that no other man did. So we know that on, in the day of Hudaybiyah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered his uh, uh, companions to, to break their ihram, to uh, slaughter the animals, and to shave their heads. After Quraysh refused them, refused that they would, get, they would enter to, Medi to Mecca and to make the, their umrah. But the, the Muslims... Uh, well, it was so hard on them that they didn't want to do it. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came back to his uh, tent and he told uh, Umm Salama what happened. And she looked at him and she said, Ya Rasulullah, go out. Do not talk to anyone. Get, get your animal, slaughter it, and ask the, uh, uh, someone to cut your hair, to, to shave your head. And then... See what will happen. And indeed, when the Sahaba, when the companions saw Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, doing that, they immediately rushed and did what, they, what he uh, uh, did and what he ordered them to do. So these, these are the most important things about Umm Salama radiallahu anha. And after Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, passed away, uh, the Sahaba, the uh, the Tabi'een later used to uh, uh, they trusted her wisdom, they trusted her honesty, and and they used to come to her to ask her about fiqh questions. They know how wise she was and how knowledgeable she was, and Umm Salama was always a source of khair and a source of uh, uh, caring for the Muslims. Uh, um Salama lived until the uh, 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 the the uh, year the year uh, sixty two of Hijra, and uh, she was uh, uh, the last of the mothers of the believers, the last of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to die, and she was uh, buried in the blessed Mubarak Jannatul Baqir. So. We learn from Umm Salama to make lots of dua. This is the main thing that we have to do. Now we move, inshallah, to Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, and we see an amazing companion here. He was almost 17 years old, of a noble family, very brave, uh, very attached to his parents, especially his mom. He was, with his being so brave, he was always compared to a lion. And uh, his uh, grandfather 
Uhaib, was the uncle of uh, Sayyida Amina, uh, the mother of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Sa'd used to spend most of his time making bows and arrows and practicing archery. This young man was not happy with the worshiping of idols and false gods, uh, false gods that uh, uh, the way his people were. He, he always thought that their belief was corrupt, that their belief was wrong. He disagreed with all the rituals and all the practices they did. Until one day, uh, Sad had a beautiful uh, yet strange dream. He saw in his dream that he was in a dark place, that he could not see anything. And then the moon came over and the moon illuminated everything for him, illuminated everything around him. So he followed this light and he saw Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Ali, and Sayyidina Zayd ibn Haritha, they saw that they had preceded him to that moon. And he asked them, he asked them, when did you come? They said, we arrived just now. And this is why it is said that Sayyidina uh, Sa'd was the fourth of the men who believed in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this dream changed his life. That moon was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with this light, the, the, this light illuminated the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he, he uh, went out and he uh, saw Abu Bakr radiallahu an. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr, uh, knew about the dream and he told him about Islam. And they both went to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and immediately Sayyidina Sa'd embraced Islam. He became a Muslim. Sayyidina Sa'd was uh, of the six people that Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab suggested to succeed him in the Khilafah. And he was of the 10 people that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave glad tidings to paradise. So, subhanAllah, this was uh, the beginning of Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Mu'az. He was raised in Islam. He refused the the faith of the non-believers. So this, uh, this reminds us of the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shade seven groups of people under his shade on the day of judgment, when there is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of these groups is a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we want to raise our children, to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be on the path of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love Sa'd a lot. And he used, he, he, he was known, uh, Sa'd was known to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was known as the uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, هَذَا خَالِي فَلْيُرْنِي مُرُؤٌ خَالَهُ So this is my uncle, let someone show me his uncle. And Sayyidina Sa'ad was known to be the knight of Islam. He was very brave. So when Sa'ad became a Muslim, many people were not happy, especially his mother, who said to him, I swear, if you do not renounce this religion, then I will not eat, I will not drink, so I will die. And people would say, Sa'ad is the murderer of his mother. 
And Sag narrated that three years passed, uh, sorry, three days passed. His mother did not eat anything on, on the first day, did not drink anything. Same thing on the second day. Third day, she did not eat or drink anything for three days. And she was in a bad state. Then he went to her and he said, Ya umma, تعلمين لو كانت لك مئة نفس فخرجت نفسا نفسا ما تركت ديني هذا لشيء فإن شئت فكلي وإن شئت لا تأكلي فأكلت He said to his mom Oh mom, if you had a hundred lives and you killed your soul a hundred times I will not denounce this deen of Allah So if you want, eat if you don't want to eat, don't eat. And when she she saw how steady fast on his, his religion, so she stopped the hunger strike. Sad loved his mom a lot. So he went to say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him to make dua to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide uh, the heart of his mother, uh, would enlighten the heart of his mother so she would become a Muslim. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. And his mom, alhamdulillah, became a Muslim. He was very happy. So at the beginning, uh, of Islam, we all know that uh, the Muslims uh, were not able to practice Islam freely. So they used to go to the outskirts of Medina to, to pray there so that the non-believers would not see them. One time, uh, some of the uh, non-believers were coming back to, uh, to the city and they saw them. So they uh, 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 they had a fight with them and they, they said bad words to them. So Sad um, got a bone and he hit with it one of the, one of the non-believers and his blood fell down. So that was the first blood that was shed in Islam by Sayyidina. Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. Na'af, by Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. Ten, year, ten years later, Sayyidina Sa'd uh, fought in uh, Ghazwat Badr, and he was the first one of the companions to throw, to, to throw the first arrow for the sake of Allah. And he used to say, Allahumma zalzil aqdamahum wa ar'ib qulubahum wa f'al bihim wa f'al wa nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Allahumma stajib li sa'd. So he used to say, he used to take the arrow, shoot it, and, and uh, say, Allahumma, oh Allah, put fear in their hearts. Oh Allah, do this to them. Oh Allah. So, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was behind him saying, Oh Allah, answer the dua of Sa'd. In Uhud, in the battle of Uhud, uh, it was it was a hard a hard battle for the Muslims, and uh, Sa'd radiAllahu an used to to take arrows from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one after the other and he used uh, to shoot them against the, non, the non-Muslims, the mushrikeen. <coughs> and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would, uh, would uh, make the dua Allahumma saddid ramyatah wa ajib da'watah Sa'd irmi Sa'd fidak abi wa ummi O oh Allah, make his uh, 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 shooting very to the, to the point, make it both eye and answer his dua. And he uh, used to say, "May my mother and father be sacrificed for you, Sad." 
And it is narrated that Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas was the only one of the Sahaba that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this sentence to him. May, uh, may my mother and father be sacrificed for you. So as I, as I mentioned, the, the uh, battle of Uhud was hard for the Muslims. And he, uh, he, he fought and he sacrificed himself to protect Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he narrates that during the battle of Uhud, he saw uh, two people guarding Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, I never saw these people before. And I never saw them after the battle. And it was, it was explained that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas see the angels protecting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this was how he, uh, his position in, uh, during the battle of Uhud. Uh, one day, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions and he told them, uh, the first man to enter from this door will be a person of paradise. So everybody looked eagerly just to see who is that person who was given the glad tidings of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he's of the people of Jannah. So they saw Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. And when uh, the gathering uh, uh, was done. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al Khas uh, went after Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas and he asked him. He asked him about the thing. What does he do that he deserved the, uh, the glad tiding of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is of the people of Jannah? So he looked at him and he said, I do nothing more than what you do. So we all pray, we all do the same thing. But every day I go to bed without having any hatred feeling to anyone. I always care to have a clean and a sound heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Illa man atallaha bi qalbin saleem. Everyone will have, uh, will be punished except for those who come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. And once uh, people ask, how can we get a sound heart? And the answer was, when you pray uh, the sunnah of Fajr, have a few moments and do 41 times, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, La Ilaha Illa Ant. 41 times, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, La Ilaha Illa Ant will guarantee you to have a sound heart. So maybe this, this uh, merit of Sayyidina Sa'ad that he has no hatred feeling to anyone was the reason for him to be of the 10 people who got the glad tidings of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be in paradise. So, uh, it was narrated that during the uh, uh, time of conquering Mecca, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was very sick and he was about to die. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to visit him and he asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have a lot of money and I have only one daughter. Would I uh, give in charity two thirds of my uh, money? And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, no. He said, how about half? He said, no. He said, how about one third? He said, one third 
and one third is, is a lot. It is better to leave your hairs wealthy than to leave them beggars to ask people. So this was uh, a fiqh ruling that the uh, uh, people of fiqh got from this. Do not give a lot of money for charity. You can donate just one third of your money for charities if you have people to inherit you. And it was said that after that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, gave him good health. He got better and he had many children after, after that. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. And it was at the time of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And then Sayyidina Umar followed. And during the time of Sayyidina Umar, uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar made Sa'ad the commander of chief uh, uh, for, for the Muslim army who uh, went to fight uh, Al Qadisiya, who went to fight the Persians in Al Qadisiya. So the Muslims were 30,000 Muslims, and the Persians were over 100,000, and they were under the leader. Uh, their leader was uh, Rustum. So uh, Sayyidina Saad uh, and the army prayed the Zuhr prayer. And uh, of course, uh, Sayyidina Saad sent uh, uh, messengers to, the, to Rustum uh, to, uh, to uh, 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 tell them about Islam and to ask them to get into the religion. But Rustum, of course, refused. And the battle started after that. The battle was so fierce that it went on for four days. The Muslims fought very, 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 very bravely. They fought with skills, and it was a big victory for the Muslims. So Sayyidina uh, Umar made uh, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, the governor of the Kufa after that. And uh, one time, uh, Sayyidina Umar received a complaint about against uh, Sa'ad radiallahu an, and uh, he uh, called him and he, he asked him to come to uh, Medina. So Sayyidina Sa'ad left Kufa and came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, and he asked him what, what's the problem with people? He said إني لا أصلي بهم صلاة رسول الله أطيل في الركعتين الأوليين وأقصر في الأخريين. I pray with, uh, for them the same way Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray with us. I made the first two rakahs long and then I shortened the next two rakahs. So uh, that was uh, uh, the time when Sa'ad رضي الله عنه he wanted to be in Medina, so he didn't go uh, back any, any, anymore to Kufa, and he left that position. And Sayyidina Sa'ad radiallahu an, came, and he lived with Sayyidina Umar. And Sayyidina Umar loved Sayyidina Sa'ad. And he made him one of the six people. He, he, the, uh, he suggested that he is one of the six people who are uh, 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 eligible to uh, be the Khalifa after him. And he said, In If Sa'd became the Khalifa, then it is. Otherwise, I ask the Khalifa after me to use him. I did not ask him to be away from his position because of anything bad that he made or any treason that he made. He was a good person. And he suggested that he is uh, to be well taken care of. So Sa'ad radiallahu an became, uh, stayed in Medina until he died in the year 55 of Hijra. He was over 90 years old. 
and his uh, son uh, talks about that uh, uh, time and he said my father was uh, 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 having his last breath uh, in my lap and I was crying so he looked at me and he said why are you crying my son and I said because of what I, I am seeing Yanni well you are past, you are you are dying and he said don't worry Allah will not punish me I am of the people of Jannah this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had promised me but he asked him to take a garment to open uh, uh, his chest and um, um, the uh, closet or whatever so he a box and he asked him to take a garment made of wool and he said let it be my shroud i wore this in uh, during the day of but of Badr, and i have saved it to be my shroud Sayyidina Sa'ad passed away and he was, he, he had his wish and his, uh, that, that garment was his shroud and he was um, buried in Jannatul Baqiyah. Subhanallah, this was uh, Sayyidina Sa'ad, the brave young man who embraced Islam immediately after the wonderful dream he has seen. He knew that worshipping idols is nothing but some false but corruption. And he was looking for the truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed it to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us raise our children to be the like of سعد بن أبي وقاص وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته